Welcome back to John's Films. Today I'm starting a new series called Wrong Way, Right Way. The first thing we'll do is review the wrong way to do something, and then we'll see the right way to go about it. Here we're looking at a clip of a woman looking at a monitor, except for it's no ordinary monitor. It's a green screen monitor. I'm going to superimpose the Puget Systems benchmark video capture that I did last week on top of it. If we look at what I've done, I've very simply taken that top clip and used the pitch, yaw, sizing, otherwise, to tr attempt to cover the green areas. And frankly, from a distance, it looks okay. However, if I really get into it, it kind of misses the mark there, and I can always try and... I'm going to hold down the shift key so that I can adjust this really minutely. On the right, I'm adjusting the pitch, you can see. And I uh, still have the corner off. This is the wrong way to do it. You see it happen all the time on YouTube, though. People do this. Um, just trying to get through it quick and dirty style. And maybe if the clip's short enough, you get away with it. However, there's a better way. Let's jump into Fusion and find out. I've got my Media N1, and I'll put that on my first monitor. And I've got Media N2. I'll put it on the second monitor. You can see what I've got going on here. Pretty simply, the footage I want to overlay and the footage that I'm going to overlay it with. So. Typically, what you'd say is, well, then let's just merge those two together. And that should very simply put this on top of that. And then, well, wait, we're no better than what we did before, where now I'm just going to be messing with the size and position to try and line it up. It's not what we want, though. We want to use what's called a corner positioner or a corner pin. I'm going to take this corner pin. You can see it's given me some very specific points, and I'm going to drop those right on top of what is roughly the corner. And when you zoom back out, this is 1080p footage. If you can get 4K footage, it would be even better. More pixels, more better. And I'm using the control wheel there, uh, the control key and the wheel on the mouse to zoom in and zoom out here. Pull that on the pin. There we go. Now I have my corner pin set, and this is going to be uh, what Resolve uses to determine the perspective that gets mapped there. So I've got the corner pin, I've got the media coming in to my corner pin, and we can see exactly what that's going to do by turning on uh, Node Viewer 1 and in Window 1, and I can see exactly what's there. What's left to do is to merge it on top of the video that I've got in place. Now, what we're seeing here is that it is shifted off just a touch. To fix that, I can do a couple of things, but because I know the perspective on this is a little bit off as well, I'm going to use a transform, and that was shift spacebar to be able to bring up that search menu. Now I've got a transform here. I'll slide this over until it's somewhere in the middle of those two, and then I will grow it. I'm going to use the X size instead of the size and aspect over here on the right. Going to use the X size because I know that's what I want to grow. Here I'm able to now see that it is much tighter. And if this were to be moving, I could also set trackers against these items. As a result, you can see as I switch back and forth here, Resolve has done a much better job of matching the angle and the size of the window that's in place through the use of that corner pin. You can see it pop back and forth here. Just really fits in much better. I'll make some room so we can further refine this. If I zoom in here, this line still looks a little harsh to me, especially with the 1080p footage. So what I'm going to do is come over to the merge node, and this controls how the corner positioner and input media sits on top of our original media of the woman working at the computer. I'll click on that merge node, and I'm going to change, as I come down to the bottom here, the nearest neighbor is how it defines where those things blur. I'm going to go to cubic, and you may notice right in here, if we look at that, when I change from to nearest neighbor, you get a much harsher line, but if I go down to cubic or some of these other options, it blurs it out just a touch, and that can help trick the eye. One other thing I can do so that it looks even better, I'm going to go into my color correction. I have to do it here because I've introduced this media in Fusion, and it won't show up properly if I put it into my coloring page. 
but I have the similar controls. So I've added a color corrector. And all I want to do here is take the overall saturation and pull it down a little bit. Not too much, but when you're looking through a video of a video, it doesn't come through quite as punchy. And so I want the real world to stand out against the background, which is the computer. And now if we look at this, I think it fits even better in there. Now we may say, wow, we're fantastic. We did it perfectly. However, there's another step we could take to make it even better. Right now, we have the plane using the corner pin that it is sitting in uh, correct. And so it's positionally correct. However, the sizing is still off just a touch. And that's because we had to manually try and size it width and height. So what we'll do, we're going to cheat by pulling in that clip again and dropping it right here on top of our footage. And, John, you just obscured everything we just did underneath. You wasted my time. Not quite. Let's jump over to our Fusion node again. And we're going to do this for a very specific reason. See those little plus signs? We could have used those earlier, uh, but I wanted to make sure we could get to the edge and track the edge as well as we could. The issue is we're now looking at these things, and we need to use a chroma key to be able to take out the green and punch through to the footage below to do that. First, we need to paint over, so I'll paint. And here with my paint node, what I'm going to do is go into my stroke duration, and I happen to know this is 372 frames long. I want to make sure I do that before I get involved with painting. Now what I'm going to do is go to my clone. I'm going to hold the Alt key and hit my mouse button, and then I'll come up here. There we go. And again with the Alt key, and I'm just covering these up because I'm going to chroma key on those next, and I don't want my qualifier. Whoops. Alt key, left mouse click, and cover. There we go. And I'm going to use this in my color page. That I will select my node, make sure I have my magical qualifier or picker involved, click and drag across the top of this. Now notice it got the same, it got the uh, approximate color space and it got the approximate values, but it didn't get the full saturation of it. So I'm able to tweak it either by grabbing the numbers below here and messing with it or just by grabbing, dragging around which hue specifically is covered. So that's the hue, this is the saturation, and your luminance is right here. What I'm doing right now is making sure I've got every one of those pixels selected. Because if I don't get all the pixels selected, when I go back here, there'll be a green view over the top of it. Wait, but it's fully green. John, what are you going to do? Well, I need to, for one, pass through what's not green. So to do that, I need to select what's not green, and I can do that by hitting the Invert button right there. And now I'm going to right-click in my node's graph space and add an alpha output. This says, pass the alpha channel as well. And in this case, we're going to turn the alpha channel to zero everywhere there is green. Now with the mouse wheel, I will zoom in. You can see there's still green here, and I'm not a fan of that. So to work with it, I'm going to use the plus sign here and just grab it. Now that might have been a little overzealous, so let's see if we can hone that back a touch. Wrong direction. Okay. Let's see if it's luminance based. Okay. The bottom of the luminance. There we go. Pull that in a touch. You can see the green starts to hint itself back in, so we pull it back a little bit. And let's go see what this looks like. Key things here, we have qualified out all of the green. We hit invert so we could pass through the woman. And we sent the alpha channel to the output so that we can use that as well. And now when we come back here to our footage, there's still one or two down here at the bottom. We could go back and touch those up a touch. But the perspective that we've got matches quite perfectly. Now, I'll leave it up to you to decide. Would you rather do the punch through with the top up here, or do you like the output of what we've got here better? 
this. Remember, we blurred the thanks for sticking through the first episode of Wrong Way, Right Way. I hope you've learned something in how to corner pin and what to do to overlay screens in DaVinci Resolve. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Give it a like and help others find the video. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.